for this June's Current Conversations podcast. Gloucester County Government partnered with the Gloucester County Sheriff's Office to feature the County Sheriff, Daryl Warren. Be sure to check out this special episode as Sheriff Warren shares about some cases that have impacted him the most over his lengthy career. Challenges facing law enforcement officials today, the recent national attention on the heroic actions of Deputy John Holt, the importance of strong training and recruitment, and much, much more. Some content contained within this podcast discusses past cases of suicide and tragic accidents. Although no names or locations are shared, listeners may find some of this information disturbing or upsetting, and listener discretion is strongly advised. Hello there. My name is Gloria Williams with Gloucester County's Community Engagement and Public Information Department. Today, I am truly honored and excited to spend some time with a very special guest, Sheriff Daryl Warren of the Gloucester County Sheriff's Office. Sheriff, thank you for taking this time as we know how incredibly busy you and your team and all of our first responders are. Thank you for having me. You got it. <laughs> um, if it's okay with you, I'd love for you to start with just a brief introduction and maybe a little bit of a discussion about your role at the Gloucester County Sheriff's Office. So started my career here in uh, 1991, uh, following my father's footsteps, who was a career law enforcement officer. He retired in 1993 as the chief deputy with the uh, York County Sheriff's Office and started my way in, in patrol and worked my way up through the ranks until ultimately being elected sheriff in, in 2012. So uh, okay. spent my entire career working with the, the same agency, which is a, a rarity uh, these days. Well, we are incredibly grateful for your service and we're so glad that you're here with us <laughs> in Gloucester County. Um, well, so maybe we could talk a little bit about Gloucester County Sheriff's Office in, you know, just in general. So you hear the term used full service sheriff's office and there's not many full service sheriff's offices in the Commonwealth uh, these days because of so many regional jails. Um, if you have a police department in your area, then the sheriff's office doesn't provide law enforcement services. If you have a regional jail in your area, typically the sheriff does not have a correctional facility, a jail. Um, most of your sheriffs, if not all of your sheriffs, do have courtroom, court security, and civil process responsibility. But we do it all here. We have a, a small jail. We're also a member of a regional jail. But we have a small jail here. Uh, we also do not have a police department. So we are the police. We are the law enforcement agency, the primary law enforcement agency in the county. And of course, we do have a, a courthouse and, and perform court security and, and civil process service. So that's what makes uh, a full service agency. And of course, you know, we have additional responsibilities such as the school resource officers in our schools, keeping our kids safe. Uh, we do still have a, a very active, successful D.A.R.E. program here. So that's a, that's a little bit about us and, and uh, kind of what makes us full service. We're also accredited um, through the Virginia Law Enforcement Professional Standards Commission. And really what accreditation is, uh, is it's an oversight committee where you are submitting yourself to outside peer review. And I can tell you that... Uh, Sheriffs don't like people telling them what to do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, it, it's, it's really about being transparent, uh, doing the right thing, not only saying you're doing the right thing, but doing the right thing. And I've been fortunate enough to have been, uh, I actually served on the committee, uh, the Virginia Law Enforcement Professional Standards Commission. So really we, we, we create uh, standards, professional standards, uh, we, we submit them out, and then we ask uh, law enforcement agencies to, to come out, uh, be a part of uh, being accredited, uh, opening yourself up for transparency and, and, and outside scrutiny. I'm, I'm proud to say that our, our last two reaccreditation uh, processes that we went through, we, we had 100% uh, perfect score. So wow. very proud of those accomplishments. Uh, Captain David Shield has been our accreditation manager during uh, both of those processes. He does a phenomenal job staying up to date, uh, making sure you know people are doing what they should be doing. And, and of course, a 
adjusting policies as needed. That's fascinating. And it's wonderful to just learn about how intricate <laughs> transparency is and all that goes into it. Um, you've touched on this a little bit about our, you know, Gloucester County Sheriff's Office. Can you talk a little bit about what is the difference between a sheriff's office and a police department? The great big difference is, uh, and, and, and it sounds small, but it's really huge. I have said, and this is nothing against my, my, my chiefs. Uh, I have a lot of uh, friends that are police chiefs. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. When you are the chief, when you are a police chief, you're really not in charge. Um, you ultimately report to a city manager, a town mayor, um, city council members, et cetera. And a sheriff reports directly to the citizens that, that he or she serves. Um, so there's good and bad with that. So, you know, in your opinion, um, as the sheriff, <laughs> What are the best parts of being a sheriff? And what, what are some of the least, you know, the least favorite parts or the biggest challenges that you find? You know, uh, it's, I, I, I love my job. It seems like it's different every day. Uh, probably the, the, the best part is, is putting plans into motion and being successful. Um, you know, we, we, it's, it's hard to, to just come up with one, you know, example, but just being, being part of a, of a winning team. Uh, and, and, and I call us a team because, you know, I think every, anybody that works for me would tell you that I don't, I don't put myself above anyone. I know ultimately I'm responsible. Ultimately I'm accountable for, for actions, good and bad. You know, I, I, I get credit for, for things like Deputy Holton, I know we're going to talk about him in a little while, but you know, I, I've I've received personally a lot of fan mail just for having him, you know, being here and 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 being prepared and and able and and willing to accept the challenge that that uh, he did. But you know, when someone does something foolish too, then that's certainly a reflection of me. I think my least favorite part is when I took this job in 2012, I made a, I, I don't know if it was a mistake, but I set an unrealistic expectation on myself. And, and I went into this job going, you know what, Daryl, it's, it's your job to make everybody happy because ultimately you have to, you have to get elected. You, you need people to, to vote for you and, you know, in four years, uh, et cetera. And at the end of the day, there, it's impossible to make everyone happy, it's impossible. Um, and and I exhausted myself with that the first year. You know, just being a learning curve, being a new sheriff, I exhausted myself with with trying to make everyone happy. You know, people that were uh, not pleased with with outcomes of, you know, it could have been an investigation, it could have been a result of a traffic stop, it could have been someone uh, that was arrested. And you know, when you when you do your best. Uh, and, and try, you know, we're not going to solve every case, but as long as you do what you're supposed to, as long as you're trying, as long as you're giving your effort, um, then, then ultimately, you know, we're going to be okay. Um, recruiting is a, uh, and I know we're probably going to talk a little bit about that later, but recruiting is, is probably our biggest challenge at this point, recruiting and, and dealing with uh, mental health issues. Well, let's go right into that. And I, I, again, you know, really just appreciate the insight that you're providing today about what, you know, you deal with and your, your deputies and your team deal with on, on a daily basis. Um, but, you know, Gloucester County Sheriff's Office is hiring. So what's a good candidate? So you need someone mature. You need someone with a great deal of common sense. Because like I said earlier, every call is not going to be the same. Every person is not going to be the same that you deal with. Um, we've often used the terminology in, in this job that, you know, you better make sure your parachute is packed tight because it's a lot of stress. It's, it's a very demanding job. The job is getting more demanding than ever. 
just with the documentation that that we're being asked to do now. Uh, organized, you really have to be organized. You've got to maintain your case files. You've got to maintain, you know, if you, if you go and and take a, a, a larceny of a, of a child's bike today, you know, that might not be a huge crime here. But at the end of the day, I tell everybody that may be the only interaction that that family and that young child has with you. So you may get one chance to make a positive impact and a leave that person with the desire to be pro-law enforcement as opposed to anti-law enforcement. Uh, and and uh, if, I, I call it a team because we, you know, we all work, uh, we all work together here. Uh, although we have many different divisions, uh, we, we really strive to, to treat everyone uh, decent, to, to, to get along, whether you work the jail or you work the street or you work the courthouse and you work the jail. Um, our dispatchers, you know, there are our, our thankless heroes because at the end of the day, they are the first line uh, in getting you help. And it doesn't matter if it's for uh, law enforcement service, uh, fire department or rescue squad. They, you know, they, they ultimately uh, work for the sheriff's office, but they, they serve all of those agencies and, and, and they do it with pride. And most people understand, uh, getting back to what I said earlier, that you're not going to solve every case. You're not going to find every bicycle that was stolen. But as long as you're trying and you're giving your, your, your effort and, and putting in the work that needs to be done and following up and staying in touch with the family uh, of the crime that you're investigating, most people understand. And that's really all they want. They want you to give, you know, a, a, a full hearted effort. Um, so, you know, people that are organized, they've got to maintain their case files. They've got to make sure they show up for court. Um, they've got to make sure that, uh, you know, even when they're off, um, especially in an, in an area like ours, you know, it, it, it just, it's not a uh, only when I'm on uniform type of situation. Sure. But yeah, level-headed, you know, common sense, patient, uh, someone who, who, you know, can can deal with with change, can deal with uh, demands, expectations, uh, and and ultimately a person who 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 has it in their heart that they want to do good and they want to do the right thing. Again, this isn't just a job; it's not; it's a lifestyle. Well, thank you for that. Sure. You know, well, you, speaking of that and speaking of very good <laughs> officers, you did bring up uh, Deputy Holt. Um, and so we know that Deputy Holt um, has received a lot of attention for an incredibly heroic act uh, recently. And maybe if you would be so kind as to talk a little bit about that. Sure. So um, his most recent, and I say his most recent because <laughs> in in, uh, in February, uh, we we nominated uh, last year um, the Greater Hampton Roads Regional Crime Line. And that's a, a multiple agencies, Virginia Beach, Suffolk, Portsmouth, uh, Chesapeake. And then of course it comes this way, Newport News, Hampton, James City, Williamsburg, York County. Here, uh, we, we all nominate a, a deputy or officer who we feel like is, is our agency's top cop. So last year we felt like um, not just the person that he is, but a situation that he was involved in, that he was gonna be our nominee for top cop. And that ultimately it goes out of our hands and it goes into the committee's hands and they take, you know, those. 15 or 20 some deputies or officers and they ultimately choose one law enforcement officer out of that region that is the overall top cop and deputy holt received it for the 2020 calendar year for an incident involving a structure fire where he made multiple entries mm -hmm. into a residence that had active flames and active smoke 
and was able to successfully rescue two adult individuals who suffered uh, second, third degree burns over 50% of their body. And uh, what was probably most important is that both of those individuals were disabled and probably would have perished had it not been for his quick actions. So um, fast forward to this year um, and Deputy Holt, again, right place, right time. He's coming, he's driving northbound on the bypass, I believe it was May 7th. I should know this date because I've heard it so many times um, over the last uh, couple of weeks. May 7th, um, Mother's Day weekend, as he's coming northbound on a bypass, he sees what he believes to be a vehicle losing control uh, and actively uh, crashing, traveling southbound. Um, so, of course, as you know, there's no turnaround on the bypass. There's this great big median strip with a big ditch. So he has to go up to the, the next intersection, which is the Belroy Road uh, intersection, turn around. As he arrives, he sees that the vehicle's overturned. There's one occupant that's standing out, uh, screaming that there's someone trapped inside. Uh, the vehicle's on its roof. Um, as he gets up to uh, the vehicle, the back door is open. He's looking in and he sees what is uh, the adult occupant of the vehicle whose head has gone through the sunroof mm -hmm. and is being uh, pinned by the weight of a, a portion of the vehicle. There's another younger child inside screaming, mommy, mommy, mm -hmm. mommy, please, mommy can't breathe. Um, you know, I can't describe it. Watching the video, please go to our Facebook page if you haven't seen it. Um, if you haven't seen it, you're probably the only one that hasn't seen it at this point. Unbelievable. Um, so he, uh, he, he calm, cool, uh, professional. He, 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 you know, he coaxes the, the young child out of the vehicle. You see him, you know, a lot of people say you see the body camera go black, but really it's not going black. He's getting up against the vehicle. He tries to lift it at one point. You can hear him grunting. Um, and he said, you know, I, it, the car wasn't moving. He said, I, I feel like, you know, I braced myself one more time. I feel like, you know, all I have to do is stand up. I've got a good grip. If I can just stand up and use, you know, my legs, my lower back and just get it up enough. You hear him grunting again. Next thing you know, you hear him saying, ma'am, are you OK? And, and if you listen real closely, you can ask, actually hear her gasp for air. Um, and she was able to self-extricate and crawl out of the vehicle on her own. Uh, ultimately was transported to the hospital uh, by our volunteer fire and rescue squad. So um, again, very, very heroic act. Um, you know, he, he did what he had to do. He did it without hesitation. And, and you know, fortunately we, we had another positive outcome. Incredible. Well, yes, the video is is just amazing. And what struck me so much was how how poised and calm he was the entire time when he spoke with the younger child. And it was just like, hey, buddy, can you get out yeah. of the car? And I just thought, can you imagine what, you know, you could just imagine wanting to scream and yell. Right. And, and But he was so poised and a calming um force in that situation and then still executed such an incredible rescue so for people just have no idea i think what could happen at any day on the job right you know well summer is here or at least it's almost here could you talk about tips to stay safe during the summer and also maybe some information about current policing trends just secure your, your vehicle, uh, secure your homes. Yes, there are more people out wandering. Uh, and unfortunately, some of those are criminals looking for crimes of opportunity. We see a lot about a lot of that. We talk about crimes of opportunity. So it's really up to us to not present those opportunities, uh, not leaving your vehicle unsecure, not leaving your windows down with, you know, your purse on the front seat. And, and that sounds crazy and that sounds extreme, it happens routinely. So just, you know, be alert. Um, we're, we're, we're certainly seeing um, a lot of uh, methamphetamine uh, in this area. 
because of the uh, availability of it and it and it's a cheaper drug, it's cheaper high. Um, current trends, you know, mental health is 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 probably our our, our biggest challenge um, nationwide, quite honestly, because there's just not enough services, enough facilities to treat the number of people that we have that need it. So ultimately, they become the responsibility of your law enforcement um, to, to take that person into custody, to get them in, in front of a crisis counselor, to try to find placement for them. Um, well, and it goes to show just how incredibly important community partnerships are and having those relationships like you know, GCSO has with other organizations to help provide those resources and those um, for, for individuals that need it. So Sh Sheriff Warren, what are your keys to success in this difficult climate for policing? Um, with you at the helm, our Gloucester County Sheriff's Office has had, has tremendous trust from our county. Um, fairly, you know, non-controversial, but at the same time faces challenges head on. How do you all do it? Let me, let me say this, uh, Gloria, I am not naive enough to think that we could be one incident away from having problems here. But I really say it all goes back to recruitment, training, hiring the right people. And, and, I, and I, I said it before and I'll say it again. It's really what's in that person's heart. And if you hire the right people, and, and certainly we, we've, we've all done our due diligence and, and hired people that didn't work out. We've hired people that have done foolish things that you couldn't see coming. But if you really do uh, everything you can, again, trying your hardest to weed out the bad ones and get the right people that wanna do the right thing, um, you're going to save yourself a lot of work in the long run. My philosophy is I would rather work short than to just fill a police car seat and hope for the best. Well, you have had a long career. Um, and, you know, if you would feel comfortable looking back at your <laughs> career, <laughs> Um, would you feel comfortable sharing some information on maybe some of your most mem your most memorable case or cases? So um, I thought about that when you sent me the the, the questions, and uh, there's there's always going to be several that you're never going to forget. Um, and my time being on our SWAT team here was probably obviously the most exciting. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you two calls that, that were, uh, I'm not going to say career changers, but they're, they, they stay with you forever. So I'm not going to go into where, cause I don't want to, I don't want to date. I don't want to, I don't want anybody to, that was um, a family member of this individual to, to, um, to feel like I'm, I'm bringing up, uh, bad stories, but I'm a brand new deputy in the police academy. And of course we had take home cars. I was, I always took pride on my uniform and the vehicles that I was issued. You know, if, if Sheriff Stanaway was good enough to, to provide me with this equipment, then I was going to take care of it. Um, I, I, because I, you know, I, I take a lot of pride in, in my work and in my equipment. It all starts with you know, uh, your appearance. So uh, it's a weekend. I am, again, I am, I'm not even certified at this point. I'm just, hey, you, you're, you're sworn in and, and go through your basic training. Our academy was in Newport News. Actually, it was in Hampton at the time. It's in Newport News now. But I had a, I had a police car and I was in front of my residence. I was vacuuming my police car out. Uh, getting ready for, you know, Monday to go back to class. And I had my ignition on so I could listen to the radio just to hear what was going on. And about a mile and a half from my house, I heard deputies on scene of a suicidal 
uh, individual that was armed with a handgun and they were requesting assistance because there was a lot of family around that was trying to get to this armed individual, a uh, very chaotic scene. Well, when I started here, there were three deputies per shift. Uh, so there wasn't a lot of backup available, mm -hmm. you know, to cover the amount of distance that we had. So I'm hearing, you know, I'm hearing the, the family in the background when this deputy is keen and Mike, supervisor gets there is like you know we we need more help down here we can't contain the family there's a lot of family it's a very chaotic scene and i'm like you know do i go down there and help do i am i going to get in trouble if i show up and help they really need help <laughs> maybe i can help so i i, I grab my gun I, I i put my gun on my on my waistband i, I had my i clip my badge I told my wife, I said, I'm, I'm going down here to help them. I don't even know if I can. So I get on scene. And fortunately, as soon as I pull on this street, the supervisor on scene is standing there. And he turns around and he sees me. And I said, can I help you? He says, Warren, keep that family back. We've got to focus on this. I said, okay. So I did, you know, my, my, my task, which was keeping the family back. In the meantime, there's an individual in the front yard holding a firearm to his head. Of course, family screaming, you know, please don't do this, please don't do this, please don't do this. And ultimately, uh, about 35 to 45 minutes later, this individual committed suicide in front of all of us. And I remember thinking when I left there, Dara, are you sure you signed up for this? <laughs> um, and it was it was a real eye opener for me. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, you got to push past it. And I and I hate to say this, I don't mean to sound cold, I don't mean to sound callous, but it's almost as if you become numb to situations like that. You just stay focused on your job. Um, I, I, I pulled up on a scene of a, of a car accident one time and individual had a, a, a massive, uh, I don't want to go into great detail, but he had a severe head injury that he was on his last breath. You could just tell. And, and the guy said, you know, you know, help me. And I did what I could. And, and ultimately within 30 seconds, you know, he passed. And you go, you leave situations like that, and you go, is there anything else I could have done? And, and don't get me wrong, this was, this was a traumatic injury that there was nothing, if a surgeon was on site, couldn't help him. But it still makes you, you know, question, could you have done more? Could you have done anything? Because um, ultimately, uh, you know, you, you got a family that's going to be grieving over this. Just, just thinking about what you or the deputies when go through and how you must have to process that. And we've talked about mental health uh, to be able to get up every single day and walk back out of the door and climb into your vehicle and go back and go back. <laughs> is it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's difficult. You know, it, it was at a couple of years ago, we had the, the man here that, that, killed the, the infant, you know, and then you've got to leave that and turn that off and go to the next call because ultimately the public expects you when, when they call 911. And uh, there's a lot more focus on uh, services for law enforcement officers and, and first responders, you know, fire EMS uh, that have been involved in critical incidents like that because, I, you know, over, over the years they've seen uh, more uh, cases of, of PTSD, um, more cases of, of suicide um, from, from first responders that just couldn't get past uh, images that they have seen. And, um, you know, there's a lot more focus on that now. You know, fortunately, it, it took a while, um, but fortunately, they, uh, there, there's a lot more assistance available to, to people. And, and we, we, we do them uh, on situations like I described. We, you know, we call them crit critical incident debriefs, and we'll do um, 
whatever it takes to, to take care of, of our, our team that, that works here. We don't want uh, individuals that, that are taking calls home, you know, uh, and, and taking it out on their family. And, and uh, you know, before cops just didn't talk about things that bothered them. That was just, you know, you didn't do that because it, you know, I'm, I'm Bravo, I'm a cop, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Superman. And uh, it's just, it's, it's not that, you know, I, I guess it, it took a, a number of situations and, and uh, like I'd mentioned suicides and, and uh, guys ultimately losing families and, and turning to, to substance abuse to, to, to cope with their issues. It took a, a lot of that going on before, you know, society as a whole started looking at, Hey, you know what, there's this group here maybe that needs some help as well. How can citizens help or support police efforts in the county? You know, being Wrong question, right? It's a big question. It's, it's, a, it's a big question. And, and at the end of the day, you know, I tell everyone, like our Facebook page, because we try to share a lot of information on that. And if, if we have, uh, if we need the public's help with solving a crime, you know, ultimately this has to be a team effort. We can't do it on our own. Um, we, we need the public. So uh, when, when we need help with, it could be a minor crime, it could be a major crime. Um, you know, we, we always reach out to the public and say, you know, give us a hand. If you can identify this person, if you can identify this car, if you've seen this person, you know, just, just be a good neighbor, be a good witness. Don't try to intervene. Um, you know, we're not looking for vigilantes out here. Uh, protect yourself, you know, but um, be, being a good witness, uh, participating, encouraging your, your, your board of supervisors to support our budget and give us, you know, the, the, the resources that we need to be able to provide uh, quality law enforcement service that we do now. Uh, we're, we, are, we are very fortunate that we have a, a board of supervisors that has been uh, very supportive of, of this office. Uh, when we've needed something, we go to them with a need uh, they listen, uh, they, they've made first responders and, and law enforcement a, a priority. Thank you so much. I mean, is there any, anything else you think of that, you know, the community might need to know or hear about Gloucester County Sheriff's Office or anything in general uh, as we wrap up today? No, you know, ultimately uh, I, I'm responsible for, for everyone here. So if you have any concerns, Call me, uh, email me. I'm, I'm, I'm a real easy person to find. Uh, I return all my phone calls personally myself. I return all my emails personally myself. So uh, please reach out if, if, if you have any issues or concerns. I'm, I'm happy to help. I appreciate the opportunity to, to share a little bit about us today with you. You know, we talked a little bit earlier about keys to success. And I think without a doubt, you being so open and communicative and all of your, you know, your entire team are so accessible. Um, and I, I appreciate you bringing that up today and would like to um, double down on that to our community to reach out. If you have a question, if you have a concern, you know, reach out. Sheriff, thanks for your leadership, for your dedication and your service to our communities. Um, we're grateful for you, your department, and all of our first and first first, as you say, <laughs> responders. Um, and thank you to everybody who tuned in to today's current conversations. And for the most up-to-date information from the Gloucester County Sheriff's Office, please go to uh, their Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Gloucester County Sheriff's Office. Uh, you can also find them, um, their contact information on the county's website at uh, www.gloucesterva.info forward slash 375 forward slash sheriff. And as always, for all county information, you can find the most up-to-date information at the gloucesterva.info or our county's Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash gloucesterva. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for all that you do. Please stay safe. Next month, be sure to join us as we chat with Katie Legg director of our Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Department. We will highlight Parks and Recreation Month, discuss summer programs happening soon, and we will receive an update on all of our parks and the many opportunities that they offer, and much, much more.